take just a few minutes to look at one of the most common DIT professional problem solving activities that you will do on a daily basis for every job. And you're going to answer a couple of questions. How long will it take and how many drives? Pretty loaded questions here and we're going to figure this out. Now the unit production manager, the director, the producer, whoever you're answering to on the production as an asset manager, probably isn't going to know a lot about the technical details. So you're going to have to help them. When they ask you how many hard drives are you going to need to hold all their footage, you maybe need to ask a couple of questions, of course. I mean, how many backups do you want? What camera are you shooting on? Those sort of things that will give you an idea of what your answer is going to be. And how long is it going to take to process these files? Well, this is a little bit of smoke and mirrors, a lot of testing, but we can crunch some numbers based on some known facts about our files, file sizes, data rates, and amount of data, and come up with an answer that's pretty close. So let's look at some details. We're going to take an example here, and we're going to run this example through the whole process so you can see how this is being done. By the way, you can build a spreadsheet to do this. So all you have to do is plug in a few numbers and you'll come up with your answers. So here's the details. We're going to assume that we're shooting an RE camera. We're going to be doing it in ProRes 444, 30 frames a second, and in a 1080p raster. Now, 30 frames a second is great for documentaries and news gathering. In most cases, if you're out doing narrative sort of film, uh, drama, that would be 24 or 23.976 but we're going to use 30 frames. Each offloads for the day is going to require two backups. That's what production wants is two backups. But you're going to actually have a third one because you're going to keep a master backup on your array. They're going to want you to create dailies, H.264, 720p, 30 frames a second, and they want burn-ins on those as well. They also want you to create one-lighted editorials, and those are going to be done in ProRes LT at 30 frames a second but no burn-ins on those. Now your computer will have USB 3 connections into the computer and out to the hard drives. And remember, when they ask you about the hard drives, you know that you need to tell them what the connections are. Otherwise, they'll go get something like USB 2, and that will really slow you down. Now the RE camera does not use SD cards. It uses another form of media that is much faster. But for the sake of this example, we're going to use SD Class 10 cards as camera mags. And we're going to assume that there's going to be six mag offloads per day at 45 gigs per card on average. All right, this is kind of a good number, by the way, because if they're shooting 65 gig or 64 gig memory cards or mags, you really don't want to go much above the 80% mark to keep the workflow moving and to protect their data. Okay, now some questions. How long to do the backups? How long to do the transcodes? And remember, there's two of them. And how many hard drives are needed? This is what we're going to solve over the next few minutes. So first, let's gather the knowns. USB 3 speed and copying is 5 gigabytes, roughly. That's pretty fast. But those SD cards, the fastest they can go in a read configuration is 94 megabytes per second. That should tell you something about our copy speeds right there. Overhead for the checksumming is a roughly 10%. So checksumming is 10% slower than straight finder copy from one drive to the other, but of course it's much safer. And the total pile of the data that you're going to receive that day is going to be six cards at 45 gigs per card, or roughly 270 gigs of data. Now we have to gather the unknowns. What's the data rate for the video per minute? This will help us out later on. What is the bit depth of the codec? This will be important for coming up with data rates. And how many total frames are there in 45 gigs of data, assuming 30 frames a second? So we're going to jump into this and figure this out. We now need to gather the unknowns. And as you see right there, how do you eat an elephant? Well, you do it one bite at a time. So the data rate for the video per minute, the codec bit depth, and the total frames for 45 gigs are our 
fundamental unknowns for this entire project. The first place I would go look for data rates would be right on ARI's website. If you go and search on the web, ARI Alexa ProRes Data Rate, one of the links will be right to their site. And here they have a very nice table that will show you their various codecs and various rasters at various frame rates. And if we look right here, we'll see that this is the 444 codec. It's 275 megabits per second, or roughly 124 gigabytes per hour. All right, that's important information. Now notice that this is 25 frames per second at 1080p. We're going to be doing 30, so the data will be a little off. If anything, it'll be conservative, and that's what we want. Now, what about the bit depth? Well, they give us that information too. Right up here at the top, it says that 4444 clips are full 12-bit bit depth RGB images. So that number we need to remember because we're going to use that later on. Now, we can start plugging some of these numbers in. Data rate for video per minute is 275 megabits per second. So we still don't know what it is per minute. That's what it is per second. And the codec bit depth is 12. We still can't figure out from this yet what the total frames are for 45 gigs of footage. But our basic math formula is total frames equal the total data divided by the data rate per minute. And we're going to do that. We need to do a conversion, though, and don't get caught up in making this mistake. The total data is in bytes, as in gigabytes. But the data rate is in bits, and it was megabits. So we need to convert bits to bytes. So this would be 275 megabits per second divided by 12 bits. Now, most images coming off of, say, 5Ds and other DSLR cameras, and quite frankly, other cameras that have um, compressed codecs in them, like AVC HD, those usually run 8 bits. So 275 million divided by 12 equals 22,916,667 megabytes per second. So we've just now converted those megabits to megabytes. Or to fit our mathematical problem a little easier, we can take that 22.9 million megabytes per second, times it by 60, because remember that was per second. Now we want to times it by 60, because there's 60 seconds in a minute. And that gives us 1.3 megabytes per minute. Well, if you look at that, that's really 1.3 gigabytes per minute. That's a lot of data. So now we have an answer for one of the things that we need. The total frames in 45 gigs. Well, total frames equals the total data divided by the data rate per minute. We know the total data is 45 gigs, and we know that the megabytes per minute is 1.37 gigs. So if we take that math, 45 gigs divided by 1.37 gigabytes equals 33 minutes of footage. So 45 gigs amounts to 33 minutes, roughly, of record time on that mag. Total minutes times seconds times frames per second will give you total frames in 45 gigs at 30 frames a second. So 33 minutes times 60 times 30 equals 58,909 total frames in 45 gigs of data. So you see here we're nibbling away bit by bit with all the information we've gathered to come up with our solutions. So as you remember, when we go to figure out the data rate of any pathway in our chain, it is only as fast as the slowest link in that pathway. So USB 3 data rate is roughly 5 gigs per minute. That's pretty fast. But the card read speed is only 94 megabytes per second. So we have to rule out the USB 3 speeds. So we're limited to the 94 megabytes per second. The math for this is total data divided by the data rate. And then divide that by 60 to get minutes. So that math again, when we plug in the numbers, is 45 gigs of data on each card divided by the 94 megabytes offload speed. And then divide by 60 
gives us the total minutes. Now that would give us an approximate offload time of 8 minutes, but in reality it's more like 15 to 18 minutes, due in large part to the increase of time due to the checksumming process, and the rest is the inconsistency in card offload speeds. All right. So what do we know now? We know that there's 33 minutes of footage per card and 58,000 frames. There's 18 minutes per card to offload. But we still have two more questions to answer. How long to render the H.264 dailies and how long to render the ProRes LT editorial files? 33 minutes of footage per card is 58,909 frames. We'll call it 59,000. We've done some tests. And we found out that in the software that we're using and the hardware that we're using, and this is something you will want to test with your software and hardware, for H.264 renders, it averages 32 frames per second for renders. So 58,000 frames divided by 32 frames a second gives us 1,841 total seconds or 31 minutes to render each card to H.264. Now the render for the ProRes LTs is 18 frames a second, so a little slower for those. Our 59,000 frames divided by the frames per second gives us the total seconds, so roughly an hour per card to render to ProRes LT. So here's some thoughts to ponder. The total time to render H.264 is 31 minutes per card, and there's six cards during the day, so now we have 3.1 hours of H.264 render time. The total time to render the ProRes is 55 minutes per card times 6 cards, so that's 5.5 hours. Our total time to backup is 18 minutes per card times 6 cards, 108 minutes. The total time for two additional backups. Now the first backup was to your array, the second two are for a vault drive and a second backup drive. 108 minutes times two more backups is 3.6 hours. Now that's the straight math for this. I will guarantee it will probably take you a little longer depending on the software you're using because it will be taking one file from one hard drive, processing those through the checksumming software and off to the other drives. That will slow it down a little bit. I would round it to four hours if I was a gambling person. So total gigs of camera raw times three backups is 3.24 terabytes of data. So now we need to answer the question of how many drives do you need. For the client, 3 times 4 terabyte drives, or 6 2 terabyte drives to handle all the data. Now that's the backups, the audio backups, and one of those drives is going to have a complete backup of all the dailies and the editorial files. Typically we have a drive or several drives we call traveler drives that will put the dailies and the editorials on and send them off to editing every day or so. So these are travelers that go out and back, but somewhere along the line you need to have all the data backed up on the two client drives so they can keep them and have safe data backup. Oh boy. So let's put this into action here. Knowing all the information that we've just given you, when do I leave set if I get the last mag at 7 p.m.? Now here's some hints or thoughts before you jump into this. The master backup and vault drive must be done before you leave set. The vault drive leaves with you. The shuttle drive with audio and editorial flips must be shipped by midnight to the editing bay. And remember our knowns. Our offload is 18 minutes per card per copy. And our render times is 31 minutes for H.264 and 55 minutes for ProRes. So pull out your pencil and paper and the calculator on your phone and figure this one out because this is something you're going to be figuring out every day. When that last card comes in from camera, when are you leaving set? Now why would you want to know this? Most people on set want to get out of there. If you're taking power from the electricians, they want to shut down the generator and leave. So you may have to find some power. They want to lock the doors. Somebody's got to hang around until you're done. I would like to know when I'm going home. All right, so figure that out. And I'm pretty sure right about now, you probably feel like this. It is not all that difficult. If you have any questions, refer to the book and review what we've gone over here. It'll make perfect sense.